Alright, so I really wanted to catch the sensor acting up, but it was going in and out of alarm, causing the stroke to go off. The numbers were changing very fast, uh, going up to like 21 point something, down to 18, down to 17, so it changes very quickly. Um, anytime it's doing that, it, it's an indication that the sensor tip needs to be replaced. So we're going to go through that, through that process today and the calibration. If you find yourself in a situation where the sensor is going erratic, going high, going low, staying low, you can go in and you can uh, find the sensor. You can do a recalibration of the sensor using one of these. So typically you come in here and we'll point this at the display. I'll show you how to do it, but we'll, we'll do the... Uh, zero and calibrate buttons at the same time. Hold it for about five seconds. It'll go through an iCal. That will clear it. So that'll steady out the sensor for a little bit. Um, it definitely needs to be replaced. This this might fix it for a day, a week, a month. Uh, but if it's going erratic, going high, going low, very quickly, it's always a sensor tip that needs to be replaced. So I'll show you how to recalibrate that. Um, and as far as safely calibrating it, right? So we'll, you can bring in a portable meter and verify that we've got, where is it? 20.9, 20.9 in here. So we know the oxygen level's not low, not high. Uh, so it's not gonna be a problem to calibrate. Nitrogen tank just blew off, but didn't decrease my oxygen. I'm good. So, um, yeah, so we'll go out there. We'll do the recal on the current sensor just so I can show you how to do it. Then we'll go upstairs and swap out the tips and show you how these can be taken apart, taken apart and fixed. It's actually an iCal we're going to perform. So to calibrate the sensor, we're going to press and hold zero and calibrate at the same time. Hold it for about five seconds, and it didn't see, see it, so we'll do it again, so it's going to calibrate, and then it counts down. Once it count, starts counting down, you can let go of the buttons. So it's telling you it's doing an eye cal. This is where you would apply a span gas, but with the oxygen recalibration, you don't need to apply a span gas. Span gas is assuming that you are at 20.8. So it goes into an end uh, and then it changes over to 20.8. So you always want to make sure you check the oxygen level when you're doing a recalibration in there. Uh, if it was actually low and we did a recal, it would be telling you it's at 20.8. So make sure you check that actual oxygen level. We're going to go ahead and replace the sensor. Uh, this was last 
done February 18th, 2020. Today is February 4th, 2022. So we didn't quite make the two years. They typically usually last about two years. So we have got them on a PM schedule to replace them in a regular interval, but uh, this one was acting up before it was due to be replaced. So what, we, what I do is I take the sensor, uh, the tip where you normally connect the tubing to when you're doing calibrations. And I throw in a couple of washers. Nine sixteenths inch socket. And that's gonna put pressure against the sensor tip. And where this is easy to spin, it'll tighten it up. So that firms up. And then I take little stainless steel metal shims. I actually got it. Got them from the first one that I took apart. Uh, and this worked great. So what we do is get that gripped onto the pair of channel locks. And you slide it. to a large section section there and then you pry it over to this metal tab leave it there so that these little tabs is a groove inside this stainless steel chamber that these little tabs grab onto prevent the sensor from coming out so we get five of those loaded in Inside, you'll find a little plastic ring, stainless steel ring, and a kind of like a rubber washer. This kind, this holds the sensor tip up tight against the electronics. So those we don't have to replace. So we can all put back in. sensor on, put a little bit of pressure on it, wiggle it off, it's really the sticky tab that's going to be holding that on. Grab this with the kind of channel oxygen, just gently, it's going to work it out and straight. you got to put a little screwdriver underneath it. That's it. The sense is out. Don't confuse it with the new one. Recycle that. Alright. New sensor. So it's, uh, this is the kit number. I, I believe we're getting these at Granger or Zorro. Uh, 
if you buy this whole assembly, I think they're up around seven, eight hundred dollars. These are about two, two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, but this is the best option because it's in a sealed container. It's not exposed to the air. Uh, do not open this sealed container container until ready to place sensor in service. It's because as soon as this is exposed to the air, it's going to start uh, reacting to the air and creating the voltage. So it's, it, it's essentially a, like a battery. Uh, there's chemicals in this that with the chemical reaction, it produces a voltage. it in. There's multiple tips here, but it only fits one way. Just line it up. Stick it on. Stick it back in the unit. It's locked in. It won't come out. And we date it. Downstairs, we'll install this sensor. Uh, as soon as we install this, the O2 level might be high, might be usually it ends up reading about 25% until the sensor warms up. As soon as the sensor starts warming up, it'll, that oxygen level will keep dropping uh, to the point it will it'll probably go into a lot, it'll drop below 19%. Uh, you've got to go back and recalibrate it. So after I install this, we do the iCal, the zero calibrate at the same time at the display. Um, we do an iCal on it. Uh, go back about every half an hour to an hour later to do another recal. It, it's probably about three, two to three hours before it totally steadies out and you're good. Uh, don't just leave the building because Chances are it'll be going back into a lot for a low oxygen reading. So as you screw this sensor in, uh, the, all the connectors will automatically line up and grab connection and screw it in safely. Uh, you don't need to power down the sensor to remove these. It's designed to drop out one one of the taps before the other so it essentially kills power to it before you take it all the way out. Alright, now we just gotta go over to the sensor head and it'll be counted down and we'll do a an iCal on it. That's at 23.5. This is a new sensor, it won't go into alarm. Now you see it's at 23.4. And then it'll slowly drop. Uh, it drops really fast at first and then it slows down even further. 22.3. I'm going to go ahead and do an iCal on it.
right, so even though it's at 20.8, it'll continue to drop. We'll come back and recalibrate it again in about maybe 15 minutes, half an hour, just to prevent it from going into a lot. So it's been about 20 minutes when we've dropped down to 19.5. Come in here. Initiate another iCal. Again, it'll count down, it'll go through it, it'll, uh, it'll end up reading 20.8 once we're done. So after that final calibration, it's out there reading 20.8. And my portable calibrated monitor is reading 20.9. All right, so always check to verify that that last calibration when you send that to the 20.8. You don't have a low oxygen situation in the room. So I think we are good. We'll call it a night.